Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is October 5th, and right now we're looking at the visible slash infrared satellite imagery. You can see the sun rising across the Pacific Ocean, and not much marine layer up and down the California coastline to speak of. That tends to happen when you get these offshore winds that are going to warm things up all the way out to the coastline. Take a look at the south of Baja. Tropical storm Lydia continues down there, and it may yet develop into a hurricane, and it's probably going to push back towards the Mexico coast. We'll take a look at the model to see if there's any chance of this bringing some remnant moisture back up over the region here. We'll take look at the extended forecast as the storm track is going to point back to the Pacific Northwest and potentially impact Central and Northern California. This is looking at very warm conditions today and Friday. Southern California you can see the heat advisories out there except for the immediate coastline there. You guys know the drill out there. This is nothing too crazy, but it is above average here as you, uh, for this time of the year. Uh, Saturday's heat risk here for some essential and the Bay Area here. You can kind of see it's moderate risk out there, but you're going to feel the warm up out towards the coastline and the heat advisory you can see it does include San Francisco there. This is from 11 p.m. 11 a.m. today to 11 p.m. on Friday. Warm through the weekend. Check out Las Vegas. Nice gradual warm up here as you go through Sunday. Bishop, Barstow, Kingman feeling that warmth as well. But, you know, it's nothing too crazy, especially compared to the summertime temperatures. But it is still pretty warm out there. Check out Phoenix. Four days of 100 plus showing up. Yuma up towards 100 and Imperial as well. Nice graphic here from the National Weather Service. Phoenix, Arizona. Here we go. All the warmth all the way out to the uh, California North Coast even. Like Crescent City, Eureka. Get into the upper 70s. Some 80 degree readings maybe out there also. You can see Eureka's uh, record high. High was set back in 1987. It was 84. Probably not going to get there today. And then you can see the gradual drop back down to normal temperatures as you go on and through Tuesday and Wednesday coming up this week. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station to record all the crazy, what, crazy weather we get here across the Southwest USA, it's much more fun to watch weather systems roll in when you've got a weather station attached to your place of residence. Santa Ana winds. I've shown this graphic the last few days here, but in just case you missed it, the high pressure as it moves down the Great Basin likes to flow out. And once it it does it compresses warms or low relative humidities come roaring across some of the coastal areas and you can warm things up out to the coast quite nicely here so that's the santa ana winds coming down there and in some of those gap areas these winds can gust to 60 miles per hour even though this is a fairly weak santa ana event that we are going through currently here we go, looking at the European as of last night. You see the big ridge forming over the Pacific Northwest here, including much of the West. And then you see that storm track tr start to return here to the Pacific Northwest. And the European showing some precipitation from the Bay Area north across California. So we'll watch that. We'll look at some of those totals here in a moment. But you got Tropical Storm Lydia. It's going to bounce around down here. It doesn't look like much of a threat as of right now. But also, as we look off into next week, and kind of see this onshore flow and some troughing here across uh, some of the West here. So we're going to drop temperatures back down from their lofty heights as we go through this week. This is looking at the NAM3 cam. This is the close look at Southern California here. You can see that San Diego, Los Angeles would be here. And you can kind of see how through some of the canyon areas here, you're gonna get some of the gustier winds. And once you get out of those uh, some of those canyons and the gaps from the terrain there, you notice it wouldn't be quite as windy here. And so just uh, a couple miles can make a big difference in what kind of winds you are experiencing, especially in these Santa Ana wind events here. And this is scrolling on in through Friday mornings. You can continue to see this offshore wind um, push off over the coastline here off from the Great Basin back across Southern California. And this is the wider look at things here. This is 850 millibars, 5,000 feet on the NAM3 camera high resolution model. So you're looking at 5,000 feet. And this is the state of California here. And you can clearly see these offshore winds. And these are going to be going all the way up through the Pacific Northwest as well, all the way down across Southern California over Baja. And kind of see those winds flowing out, marking the Santa Ana winds here in our nice warm temperatures here as we go through Friday and some of the weekend for much of the area. Then you kind of see this next storm track start to return to the Pacific Northwest. And that's the frontal system that could bring some rain for Northern California. More on that here in a bit. Looking at the National Blend of Models, you can see nice and warm all the way out to the coastline. This would be for today, Thursday. This is for tomorrow, again, quite warm, even portions of the desert areas and Arizona, Phoenix up over 100. And you can see uh, San Francisco maybe getting up towards 90 degrees here as well. Some nice warm conditions across the Central Valley areas. But it's, you know, relatively speaking, <laughs> it's pretty comfortable this time of year for what you can get in the summertime. But this also is not rare for October. You need to start getting these wind, offshore wind events here and you know sometimes they can even start some fires but a lot of times during this time of year is when some of California gets their, their warmest conditions including out towards the coastline with these offshore winds. So let's scroll ahead a little bit more here Saturday, Sunday, Monday then you can see that onshore flow return with the next system moving through some of the places in Northern California Oregon, Washington and precipitation chances even for some of California with the system as it comes in here as you can see our temperatures dropping back 
back down as we go towards midweek. This is Los Angeles, LAX, out towards the coastline here. You can get three days here today, tomorrow, and Saturday up towards 90. Another fairly warm day here Sunday before you drop back down towards normal. Then it looks like it might remain above normal here as we go on in through mid-October. We'll continue to watch that. Take it with a grain of salt. San Francisco, look at this. Now the Europeans showing two 90-degree days today and tomorrow. You guys are going to be baking out there right along the immediate coastline here. And you can see Saturday, another very warm day here before that onshore flow returns with the next system moving through the Pacific Northwest. Fresno, very warm as well. Look at these mid and upper 90s showing up here. You can see this red line when I show these graphs here is the average temperature for this time of year. So right now we're hovering around uh, the lower 80s for the most part. So you're looking 15, maybe even 20 degrees above average for some areas. And then the kind of a little bit of a cool down here as we go through midweek. Las Vegas, something similar there. Phoenix, you're hovering around 100 for a few days as well. And you can see the slow and gradual decline as you move through mid-October in the average highs. San Jose, check out these temperatures. You're talking about mid and upper 90s across some of the Bay Area out here, especially away from the immediate water. And look at some of these overnight lows well up into the upper 60s here when the average high or the average overnight low here is about, what, 54 or 53. So um, impressive stuff. And we're going to turn the flow back on short here for you. Now, looking at Tropical Storm Lydia, you can see it's supposed to be a tropical storm until you get to about 6 a.m. Saturday, then it might be a hurricane for a day or so, and then it'll make its turn back towards Mexico. And you got to watch this over the next few days because you know this system or another one that can develop there. A lot of these times, these remnants can start to push northward back up towards the southwest USA. No sign of that right now, but it's just something we're watching on a daily basis. This is looking at the GFS precipitable water. You can see what is Tropical Storm Lydia down here. There's California, there's Baja, there's Hawaii off to the left, and the Pacific Ocean is here. Put that into motion. You can see Tropical Storm, maybe Hurricane Lydia spinning there. Then it makes its trek back towards the east here. But you can see not much moisture making its way northward into the southwest USA. As you can see, some frontal systems moving into the Pacific Northwest here and maybe impacting California through the extent it's some interesting stuff out there. But it's purely fantasy right now. That almost looks like an atmospheric river feature there for Northern California. But nothing to worry about just yet. We have plenty of time to look at that. Something really interesting out there in the extended portion of the GFS. You can see this low pressure system trying, to, system trying to grab some of this moisture here and bring it back up over the southwest USA as well. Purely fantasy at this point. That was just entertainment there. Looking at the European Ensemble Mean, this is last night's run, the 06Z. So we're going to put this into motion and you'll see some of this precipitation start to arrive maybe on the day Monday for Northern California and even the Bay Area might get on uh, in on this action by the time we get to Monday night into Tuesday morning. And we'll see how this trends over the next few days, but this would be you know beneficial rainfall especially this time of year you're not looking at exceptionally heavy amounts across the Sierra Nevada heavier amounts uh, some of the coastal range up into southwest Oregon as well but yeah a nice signal there this goes uh, this would be about Tuesday night coming up so this isn't that far out so hopefully you can get some rainfall out of this next system here I know some of the Bay Area has been exceptionally dry for the last several months six to ten day temperature you can see much of the west still kind of above average hovering there and this is just kind of probability of being above average here so you can kind of see the shading here in the chart down to the bottom right and if you want more detail on that you can check it out on the NOAA site I tend to show these on a daily basis though this is six to ten day precipitation outlook and you can see the storm track starting to return to the Pacific Northwest and it may include the central Northern California Bay Area North here as we go kind of a below average signal here for much for Arizona and New Mexico here as we go through mid-October as well eight to 14 day check it out much of the West is still looking at above average conditions we'll see how this trends and eight to 14 day precipitation as there may be some uh, systems continuing to move through the Pacific Northwest, impacting Northern California. And I have some people leaving some super thanks talking about, maybe talk about the eclipse a little bit here. It is nine days out, but we'll take a brief, quick look at it here as well. So thanks, you know, Jerry, Pete, El Scorcho, uh, EHD Coyote, you know, thanks everybody for sending these super chats. It kind of helps things out for the channel. And yeah, and remember to subscribe to the California Weather Watch channel if you would, please. I'm going to cut off these videos for the Pacific Northwest Weather Watch page here in you know the next couple of weeks. So they will all be there as we try to get that channel established and get the word out to more people across California. But anyway, let's look at that eclipse, the annular solar eclipse. Moving in across Oregon, clipping Northeast California, moving across Nevada there, you can see that this is going to be coming right across Nevada. And that may be the most favorable spot to view this. As you guys know, Nevada is very dry and it's on the east side of the Sierra Nevada. So you may be your best bet here to be free of clouds. But let's look at the forecast. 
We scrolled all the way out here to October 14th. This is Saturday morning. You can kind of see the clouds. This is the system out here off the coastline. The European and the GFS actually both show it this far out, but there is always the chance that maybe this will back up a little bit more and you'll get some better weather. But right now, it does show some cloud cover across Oregon. Better chances as you go across Nevada. And if you kind of put that into motion, you can kind of see that system rolling. But this shows a better picture of it here. Let's back up here. So this would be the 13th. October 13th, in the morning. You can see the troughing off the West Coast on both the GFS and the European. So, as we get closer to the 14th, you can kind of see it hanging out there. The good news is this is nine days out and there's plenty of time for this to change. Maybe this trough will set up a bit further west or the system will kind of move through and we'll get some clearing in the wake of it. But, we'll, you know, we'll kind of watch this here over the next few days. But right now, it does look like there may be a system approaching the west coast for this annular solar eclipse moving across the region. It should be quite interesting because you'll see the sun and you'll see the moon inside of the sun with the ring of fire around. It's not going to block out the entire sun. So should be some nice images coming out from that. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, remember to click uh, subscribe to the California Weather Watch page. I'm going to upload this video here first today to try to kind of establish that. I, you know, people that have been helping me with the page say that the algorithm will probably get better and we'll probably get the word out to more people in the state of California and Arizona and Nevada and Utah and whatnot here along much of, uh, over the southwest portion of the USA. If we name it California Weather Watch, I've had a, some confusion as to why I'm doing California videos under the Pacific Northwest Weather Watch page. But anyway, make sure to subscribe there. Um, click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.